Nehemiah chapter 7. Now it came to pass when the wall was built, and I had set up the doors, and the porters and the singers and the Levites were appointed. Like I said, uh, we finished the wall in the last chapter, but we finished the wall in chapter 3. It may not be in order, or it may be talking about just the portion that Nehemiah was working on. Now I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Israel, for he, Jerusalem, for he was a faithful man and feared God above many. Now you run over to Acts chapter 7, and you see that is the charge for a deacon. You can run back and forth between the New and the Old Testament, between the church, and you can see church foundation. You go over to Acts chapter 7, it says there to be whole, filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, faithful. We go to read it. With this, you find the faithful man and fear God. I'm going to say this because I've been in enough churches God's blessed me to be in that I've seen men put in office just because of who and what they did. I'm amazed that I've been in a church where you got people in office, they're not even in the church. And I don't mean that they're, you know, they're home and stay home on Sunday and stuff like that. I mean, they are far away. And these men and the men of the deacons in Acts chapter 7, they are in charge of the people, not the pastor. The pastor, according to Acts chapter 7, his job is to labor in the word. If there's anybody that needs help, as in Acts chapter 7, the, the widows that were not being taken care of, you're to call upon these men, the deacons. But we've exploded today where the deacons in some churches overrule the pastor, you know, and deacon, as the book I just read for my, my, my class, where do we go? Where do we come from? Where are we going? We're going to pot. So Nehemiah, you know, is a faithful man of God because, look, it's his brother. Okay, fine, it's it's a brother. But he was a faithful man, and he feared God above many. Now, you know there are some people, look, yeah, he just chose his brother. Ah, I'm better than that person. Well, according to the scriptures. So... Nehemiah puts faithful men and men that fear God in charge. That's scripture, black and white, King James Bible. And I said unto them, Hanani, his brother, and Hananiah, Let not the gates of Jerusalem be open until the sun be hot. Don't open them up at 6 o'clock in the morning. The day, the day, start the day off. Wait till, wait till the sun's been up a little while and it's been hot. America is open 24 hours, 7 days a week, and if you can get 26 hours and 8 days, they do that. And while they stand by, let them shut the doors and bar them. And appoint watches of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, everyone in his watch, everyone to be over against his house. Now, what have we been dealing with? What is Nehemiah doing? We've been seeing the enemy here. You don't open up those gates bright and early in the morning so they can sneak in in twilight and uh, do damage. And then you watch those gates. You don't let the enemy come in. So what do you do? In 2013, you paint on your sign in the church, everybody's welcome. Oh, really? So you invite everybody to come into your church. The sodomite comes in, sits down, the pastor preaches a message about sodomy, and that guy goes running off to the ACLU. Well, that sign says, I'm welcome. I didn't like the message. That's hate literature. Am I wrong or am I wrong?
When is the church supposed to be a hangout for, for thieves and sinners? We're to watch out who comes into the church. Well, Uncle Joseph, he doesn't know about Jesus Christ, so I invited him to come out to church. What about you? Why don't you tell Uncle Joseph and Uncle Mary or whoever and everybody in your family like that? Why don't you tell them about Jesus? Well, I don't know. All right? Tell me the first 22 drivers for the Daytona 500. I bet you can probably tell me the position they're going to start. What are the numbers and the stats of the of the of all the pitchers on, the, on a certain team? I bet you can tell me all the numbers and all the stats. Who's going to be on Wednesday night? And it is, I, I used to catch people on this. Who's going to be on Star Search Wednesday night? Well, blah, blah, blah. Ah, that's why you're not here Wednesday night. Oh, yeah, got you. I used to do that all the time. But you don't know how to tell someone about Jesus Christ. Why don't you throw a monkey wrench in there? Why don't you tell why don't you have that person tell you how they got saved? With a Bible. If you can't tell me, I've been around the block enough times now to know, you know what? Maybe you're not. Oh, you're saying, listen, I'm judging things, not the person. Now, I don't remember. Well, actually, I do remember. I was saved on a Saturday, April 21st, 1987, at my grandma's house, 773 Broad Street, at the, at the coffee table. I went Sunday morning, the next Sunday morning, went to church and Raise my hand and tell everyone I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I came home from church that Sunday and went to my dad, the very first person, and told him about Jesus Christ. What did I know then? I know I was saved. I know there was a hell. I don't know how I got off on that stuff, but I'm talking about it with the church today. you got to put a guard at the door, especially when they have laws against us. I mean, you telling me you can invite anybody in the church, that, that means the pastor can't preach the message he wants to preach. Because your babysitter may be a lesbian. But you want to make her feel good and realize now you got a lesbian watching your children, then stand up for your pastor. Listen, in Canada, the pastors are already being held off to jail for preaching messages. America will be next. Because you don't guard the front door. I've heard people, you get somebody come to church and she's scantily dressed. Well, you know, she's a sinner. And she's also a distraction for all the men. What are you going to do? You want me to shut up? I can't shut up. I'm like Jeremiah. I'm going to preach the word if you like it or not. So the, the enemy is there in chapter 6. The enemy has been there all through the book. He's like, don't let the enemy come in now that we're done. I mean, we built these walls. We built these gates. We put the locks on it. We put the beams on it. What are you going to do? Let them in now? There's a book by John Bunyan, Holy War. You need to read that book along with Pilgrim's Progress. Holy War by John Bunyan. How Satan gets into the city of God, and they kick God and everybody out. You need to read the books about John Bunyan. God gave him a lot of insight. Forget about uh, Left Behind. Forget about uh, what all the other junk today. Now the city was large and great. It was. 
So how are you going to watch it all? Through the gates. We got a great large church. Who will rat on you? Who's who? These mega churches. You don't know who anybody is. But the people were few therein, and the houses were not builded. You mean how, where are they sleeping? They're sleeping out in tents. They're sleeping out wherever they can find a spot. They took care of the city first. And my God put into my heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people. They might be reckoned by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogies of them which came up at the first. That's Ezra chapter 2 is a reference. And found written therein. The people that came up to build the temple. Those are the ones that came up first. These are the people that came with Nehemiah to build the city. Now you don't see register listed in Ezra, but the people you find in Nehemiah chapter 7 verses 63 to 65, the people who could not show their genealogy of the priest. That's the only register you see. So what you probably would say is Nehemiah is an official count. Where Ezra was a head count. You're going to find differences. The Bible ain't junk. The Bible ain't wrong. There's a reason. And you want to get out of your cemetery, of your learning, your fall Bibles, all that. I want you to take a handful of people. I want you to count everybody in the lower 48 states. And I want you to go count them three more times. And I want you to see how much your numbers will change. To see if you get the exact numbers. Now smack you in the head with your NIV. There, now there's a register of numbers. Ezra said he searched for the res register and they couldn't find it. Now, but he was talking about those priest people who were they couldn't prove that they were priests or not. So was he looking for the priestly? Register or was he looking for this register that's here? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you, the numbers are different. So what? Maybe somebody died on the way. Maybe somebody went back. Maybe somebody was counted where they weren't supposed to be counted. I ain't going to throw the Bible away for that. I'll throw you away in the garbage can. These are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those that had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away, and carried again to Jerusalem and to Judah, every one unto his city. Here we go again with these names. And we'll go through names again in Nehemiah a couple more times. But I believe Jesus said by every word, Who came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramah, Nehemiah, Nehemiah, Mordecai, that is not the Mordecai of Esther, Bilshan, Mishpiriv, Bigvail, Nehum, Bana, the number I say, that's interesting, I say, you know, that's in cap, that's in uh, italics, of the men of the people of Israel was this. Almost the I say there, I, now, this is me, you can throw this in the garbage can. It's almost like Nehemiah looks at Ezra's report and says, well, this is what I say. I can't prove that. But a lot better than just throwing it in a garbage can. The children of Parush, 2,170 and 2. The children of Shephatiah, 370 and 2. The children of Ara, 650 and 2. The children of Path of Moab. Moab. Most of the people that were cursed were called bastards. Oh! He swore! You know what the Bible says. 
of the children of Jeshua and Joab, 2,818. The children of Elam, 1,254. The children of Zatu, 845. The children of Zakai, 703 score. The children of Benui, 640 and 8. The children of Bebi, 620 and 8. The children of Asgad, 2,322. The children of Adakim, 603 score and 6. Now, what is interesting about that one? Three score and seven. What verse is that in? In Ezra three in Ezra two thirteen it is six six six. Six hundred three two score three score and six, whatever that they lost oh no, they gained one guy somehow. Are the are the Bible chapters and verses uh, verse eighteen? Six six six. There is one difference. One number added. How? Why? Maybe someone was born. I don't know. The children of Big Vile, two thousand three score and seven. The children of Eden, six hundred fifty and five. The children of Eter of Hezekiah, ninety and eight. The children of Heshem. 320 and 8. The children of BZI, 320 and 4. The children of Harfif, 112. The children of Gibeon, 90 and 5. The children, uh, excuse me, the men of Bethlehem and Nithimoth, 104 score and 8. The men of Anath, that's where, that's where Jeremiah was from, 120 and 8. The men of Beth, Ezra, Matthew, Matthew, forty and two. The men of Courage of Jerome, Shephir, and Berioth, seven hundred and forty and three. The men of Rama and Gibeah, six hundred and twenty and one. The men of Michmas, one hundred and twenty and two. The men of Bethel and Ai, a hundred and twenty and three. Bethel's where they had the golden calves, where they had the worship of the false god. The men of the other Nebo, 50 and 2, so there's two Nebos. The children of the other Elam, there's two Elams. Just, just, just read your Bible, it'll tell you what, what's going on. 1,215, 4. The children of Harem, or Harem, 320. The children of Jericho, the cursed city, 340 and 5. The children of Lud, Hadid, and Ono. Well, that's what we read about Ono before. I mean, can you just picture, and you know, here comes these people, 720 and 1, and then, oh, here comes the children of Ono. The children of she, Shania, 3,930. The priests, the children of Je Jedediah, the, of the house of Jeshua, 973. The children of Immer, 1,052. The children of Pasher, 1,240 and 7. The children of Hiram, a thousand and seventeen. The Levites, the children of Jeshua, of Kadamio, the children of Had he Old Via, seventy and four. The singers, the children of Asaph, there's a guy that you see his name in a lot of the titles of the Book of Psalms. This guy was respected by David and respected by God, the Holy Spirit. That his name doesn't that only appear. His name appears in a, in the genealogies and also appears in the song titles. And his children, a hundred forty and eight, the porters, the children of Shalom, the children of Atar, the children of the Talmud. The children of Echub, the children of Hatai, Tai, Tai, By this time your tongue gets tied. The children of Shabaya, the hundred and thirty and eight. The Nethanins, the children of Ziha, the children of Heshupuha, the children of Teb Atheus, the children of Kirios, the children of Sai, the children of Pedon, the children of Lebanon, 
the children of Hagaba, the children of Shemari, the children of Hanan, the children of Gideon, the children of Gahar, the children of Reiah, the children of Rezin, the children of Nicodiah, the children of Gezim, the children of Uzzah, the children of Pasha, the children of Basai, the children of Minuimin, the children of Feshaham, the children of Babar, the children of Hekipoah, the children of Harha, the children of Basai. Listen, you want to learn Hebrew? <laughs> Well, in the Hebrew and the Greek, why don't you shut up and read uh, G, uh, read the Chronicles first? The first five chapters will be good enough, okay? Read Nehemiah chapter 7 before we go into Hebrew and the Greek. Transliterate and all other kinds of junk. You can master these names and not be Jewish. I mean, I'm guaranteed. I mean, listen, you try it. The guy, you meet these people in heaven. They're not going to punch you in the face. They're just going to laugh. You know? You gave it a shot, and you're going to find out how simple the name really was. And they say get Bibles that have the markings and all that. You mean the English markings for a Hebrew name? I don't think so. These are Hebrew names. You don't use English pronunciation. The children of Barcos, 55, the children of Caesarea, the children of Tama, the children of Nessa, the children of Hathophiah, the children of Solomon's servants, the children of Satai, the children of Sophrahith, the children of Paradiah, the children of Jael, the children of Darkon, the children of Gideon, the children of Shaphatiah, the children of Hattiah, the children of Parshareth of Zebaim, I'm about to stall. The children of Amon. All the Nethanins and the children of Solomon's servants were 392. There are some people that say that you could be reading your own name here somewhere in this list. And there were they which went up from Tel Mea, Tel Tarshia, Cherub, Adon, Immar, but they could not show their father's house, nor their seed, whether they were of Israel. Now that house doesn't mean they couldn't walk up, you know, here's the house right here. It's got three rooms and an out, outside bathroom. That's not what it's saying. They're saying the mamas, the papas, the aunts, the uncles, and everybody else, and the brothers and sisters, and that's what it means by the house. The children of Delilah, the children of Tobiah, the children of Nicodah, 650 and 2. And of the priests, the children of Habiah, the children of Coles, the children of Barzillai, which took one of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite's wife, was called after their name. Thank you, God, for giving us that information and giving me some more names of a tongue tie, but it means something. What? I don't know. This guy's wife was important. And God said, you know, listen, if God wants to record in your life something that happened in your life, he won't forget and he will put it in there what he wants to do. They sought their registry among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but it was not found. Now you run back over to, I said, what did I say, Ezra 2. Uh, 162 or 262, I got bad luck. handwriting. What wasn't found? The register of these people. But Nehemiah is holding a register, but here is a register that can't be found. So there's two registers. One of them is missing. But it was not found. Or their name was not found in the register. It could be either or. Therefore were they, they who were not found, as polluted, defiled, or unclean. We talk about pollution as putting stuff in the air and putting stuff in the water. Here are God's priests that God says, you know what? You're defiling. You're unclean. I don't want to count you in. You want to name a few people? 
in the eyes of God, they're polluted. And when God goes to take a drink of the water, he spits it out. You want to run that to Revelation chapter 3? And uh, Tarshua, which is governor, said unto them that they should not eat the most holy things till there stood up a priest with the Urim and the Thurim. Now, that Urim and Thurim is what was put into the breastplate. Somehow that spoke to the high priest. David sought the breastplate for answers. They're going to say, when we get the Urim and the Thurim, then we'll ask God about these people. They're not throwing them out because they can't find the register. You can't throw somebody out saying, listen, you're not saved. The Bible says we are to judge things, not people. But when you go to God and God makes the statement, I'll tell you what the God's going to make the statement of the church ages. It's going to be the rapture. God will tell you who's his priest and uh, who's his king, according to Revelation chapter 1. And those that are not have their names in the Lamb's book of life. You stay here. Those whose names are in the register, the Lamb's Book of Life, imagine what we're reading about in Nehemiah, will go to be with the Lord forever. Now, we don't know their story. They think they're, they're priests. You notice how God just leaves that like that? He doesn't tell you what happens to them? There are people in this, this world today that you think they're Christians. And you look at them like, I don't think so, but you can't say. There's only three people that know a person's soul. God, Satan, and them. But we're told through James, we're told through scriptures, we can look at them like, you better deal with their lost soul than growing up as a Christian. In other words, when you look at somebody and they say, listen, I'm saved, and you look at their life like, don't try to teach them, you know, Jesus was born and teach them to Trinity and, you know, to grow. No, no. If God's laying on your heart that they're not saved, you deal with them as being unsaved. Don't give them head knowledge. They can tell you when and where Jesus was born. When and where Jesus was uh, was circumcised and named, they can tell you when he started his ministry, where he started his ministry. They can quote all kinds of scripture. They can tell you find a place and all that. They can everything in the Bible. But if their name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, God will one day say, "Listen, you know what? You're not going." And Jesus said, "There are a bunch of people. He's going to tell them, say, listen, depart from me. I never knew you.'" And here are people, listen, we're priests. Now whether they're, they're, they are or whether they're not, we don't know, but God does. The whole congregation together was 42,303 score. Now match that number back to Ezra and see what you get. I'm not going to do it. Because if, num if the numbers don't match, I know there's a reason. And I'm not going to say the Bible's wrong. I don't need to go check that. It's not really a doctrinal statement that, okay, Ezra and Nehemiah's numbers don't match. Now, when I take all four Gospels and what Pilate wrote upon the, the cross, all right, that don't match. i got to find out why. That's, so that tells you, listen, that was written in all the language of the world. Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Ah, Besides their maid servants, men servants, excuse me, and their maid servants, of whom three, of whom there were seven thousand three hundred and twenty and hundred three thousand. No, I'm going to try it again. Verse sixty-seven. Maybe by then I'll have a baby or something to listen and make it really misconfusing. Besides their maid man servants and their maid servants, of whom there were seven thousand three hundred thirty and seven. 
And they had 245 singing men and singing women. Now that's in addition to the 42,360 given in verse 66. Oh, Lord, now you're going to get into animals. Their horses, 730 and 6. Their mules, 240 and 5. Their camels, 430 and 5. 6,720 asses. Some of the chief of the fathers gave unto the work. The Tarshathif, oh boy. Tarshima, Tarshimathia, the governor, gave to the treasure a thousand drams of gold, fifty, ba fifty basins, five hundred and thirty priest garments. And the sons of the chief of the fathers gave to the treasure of the work twenty thousand drams of gold, two thousand two hundred pounds of silver. And don't tell me God does not record what you get. You know what's amazing? If you were to break in this house right now, hold a gun to my head, tell me how many gospel tracts I've given out in a lifetime. You just might as well just shoot me. Now let me ask you a question. Since Genesis to Nehemiah chapter 7, you think God knows how many gospel tracts you've given out? But yet, do you think God also records the gospel tracts you didn't give out, you were supposed to? I think so. I know so. I can say that 99% surety, reading from Genesis to Nehemiah, so, and we haven't you know, gone to the book of Revelation yet. I guarantee God has counted every single gospel tract we've given out. That's a mighty God who can count that. That's a mighty God. Seventy-two, I think. Can we just say seventy-three and call it quits? And that which the rest of the people, now this is the people, gave was 20,000 drams of gold, 2,000 pounds of silver, three score and seven priest garments. So the priests and the Levites and the porters and the singers, some of the people, and the Nephilims, and all Israel dwelt in their cities, they're in the land. And when the seventh month came, now that's the month that has all, has the majority of the feasts. That's the month that maybe Jesus was born in. The Day of Atonement, the uh, Feast of uh, uh, Booths, Tabernacles. Uh, there's one more, I can't think of it. The seventh month was the busy month. The children of Israel were in their cities. And that's important. They're not in Babylon no more. They're in their cities. What's that tell you? They're not in their cities today. There is coming a day when they will be in their cities. In the millennium. With the temple there. With the wall built. With David sitting there. With Jesus Christ being there. With the twelve apostles being there. With those that served the Lord during the church age will be there. You want to talk about a, a feast. You want to talk about a marriage dinner. You want to talk about a celebration. Nehemiah is history, but yet it's future too. As we close Nehemiah. 